Hello everyone, here is Ammar Saud. Today I will speak about my experience as PMC, Project Management Consultant, and how I implement digital tools to be utilized and to achieve our objectives in the PMC across the project stages from design to construction to handover and operation. So let's get started. My name is Amar Saud. Just a summary of my experience. I have experience in the AAC industry more than 12 years. I am uh, uh, working in the BIM management, BIM implementation and BIM training. I have successfully managed and coordinated various disciplines, including civil, architectural, infrastructure, and MEP works. And um, I have experience in managing different uh, projects, large scale projects in various sectors, infrastructure, healthcare, industrial and residential, commercial and governmental projects. My background is civil engineering and I have master in construction engineering and management and a master of global BIM management and I have some different certifications in the world of BIM and digital technology. By the end of the session, we will be able to set clear PMC goals for each phase to guide digital transformation. We will conduct a gap analysis to identify efficiency improvements through digital tools I will, and we will learn from real cases studies how to set action plan and explore effective digital solutions. So let's get started. Our strategy to implement digital tools is first to understand our BMC objectives and then doing the assessment and gap analysis to understand where we are and then do and set the action plan and finally, after we implement these tools, we, we will have lessons learned, we will apply it and search for improvements and so on. So this is our strategy. Let's get it started. First, PMC objectives. So to be successful, we have to set our digital innovation tools to be closely tied to the goals of the organization. And our organization is the PMC. So we cannot just say, for example, I want to implement laser scanning or implement open space in our project because I like it or because it is wonderful. You know, you need to uh, sit a goal that can be achieved for our organization and connected with the digital tools. So we should understand our PMC scope. So here, for example, we have a scope of oversee all aspects of the project from design to construction completion and home and handover. This includes coordination and managing the work of all involved parties such as design consultants, contractors, and supervision consultants. So you can see here the PMC is managing the supply chain from design to construction contractors to supervision consultant. So this is the scope of the PMC. If we go to the PMC goals, so we have goals in each uh, phase. So this is a summary of the goals. It is connected or uh, it is related to uh, in the design to the comprehensive project planning and scheduling, the design review and validation, risk mitigation, design processes, construction phase uh, preparation, and then we go to the construction when we have to manage the progress of the construction and control the construction, constru con uh, construction team management and so on. Uh, for operation, we have to make the handover process and coordination and make the inspection and taste. So this is the main goals that we have as PMC. And this is what we want to achieve. So any digital tools should be connected to these goals. And for, uh, for our 
basic PMC digital goal is to utilize these digital tools to achieve our goals to facilitate design, coordination, constructability, and handover of the assets models. So this is basically our um, way of thinking. We need to think in this way to implement the correct and the right tools in our projects. So after we finalize the PMC objectives, we will go to the assessment and gap analysis. And I will start talking about real experience and real projects. So here we have a project as district and this district is multi-use district that consists of various types of buildings, including residential, structural, offices, spaces, and mixed use. Uh, the project size was twin, uh, it, it was consisting of 20 plots. The area is 150,000 square meters. And we had challenges and we should, we should uh, put the main challenges to understand our project. So that project was in tight, tight timeline schedule and the construction and operation are going in parallel for some assets. So you can see that um, some assets is operated in the, be the below part and the upper part is not yet operated. It is under construction or that there are some construction activities. So these were the main challenges of that project. After that, we have to do the assessment and gap analysis. So as PMC, we were in a position that we started after several buildings were constructed. So some of the buildings were already constructed, some of the buildings were under construction, and some of the buildings were under design. So we made our study and we found some issues like the client EIR. We have EIR that require BIM deliverables from uh, the designers and contractors. However, we have some designers and contractors th who received different EIR in their contracts because of uh, the EIR changes and that affected the transition from design to construction. Uh, number two here, we have design coordination. So we had some issues in some design uh, were not accurate because there are some major clashes and this design caused variation orders in the construction stage. Number three, BIM sighting coordination gaps. So we, we, we found that the contractor lacks effective coordination between the BIM team and the site team. I don't know if you face this. I know many people face this issue. Like the BIM team is, is doing great job, but in another planet, the construction site team is not doing what is there in the BIM model. So um, the gap between these uh, two parties should be filled or sh we should make it more efficient to ensure there is co uh, correct coordination between site and office. Uh, number four, supervision resources constraints. Because of the tight schedule, the supervision team is not able to effectively supervise the all the areas on time. Uh, we have number five, as well documentation delays. Number six, handover document delays. So this is the gaps that we found and we aim to make what we can to solve and to fill these gaps. So now we are going to highlight the goals that can be achieved efficiently utis utilizing digital, digital tools. So already we have decided the objectives. Now we are just gonna focus on some objectives that can be enhanced using digital tools. And from there, we can set our objectives and action plan. So we have the different phases, design, construction, operation. We have the transition between the design and construction in uh, tendering stage. Uh, the transition from construction to operation is the handover stage. So you can see here the construction is the core. The construction is the most important part in our job as PMC. So uh, we want now to decide three main objectives across these project stages. So uh, here and the first we will 
ensure that the design is constructible and I will go on more details later on. We will ensure that the construction, uh, we audit the construction on site correctly. Uh, number three, to ensure that we are delivering reliable as well models and AIR. So when we make the handover, it is correctly managed. So this, these three things are our main objectives. So as you can see, after we made our assessment and gap analysis, we set our goals and our objectives very clearly. And now in the action plan, we are going to link these objectives with our digital tools and ensure that our digital tools are doing exactly what we need to achieve. So let's go to the action plan. So this is our three essential objectives. Let's start with the first one, constructible design. So here we have to set the objectives. We want to avoid waste. We, we want to avoid delay in construction stage. We want to minimize the variation orders. Okay, this is why we, we need constructible design. And hence, the plan is to minimize the issues and to uh, make it more reliable design, we should define clash matrices. We should define design checklists uh, that we can uh, follow. Define automated way of accepting design. This is the plan and this is how we connect it in digital tools. So for example, we will set our Navis work clash detection set to match our matrix. We will implement the S2 management tool in ACC or to this constructor cloud. We will uh, use the Power BI dashboard to track clashes and design issues. So these were our digital tools to uh, achieve these objectives. Now, here some examples from what we have implemented in that project. So Neighborsworks clash detection sets. You can see here we have clash uh, matrix with the clash tolerances that are connected to uh, the, the sets in Navis works and from them we run our clash uh, clash tests and we have we connected the results to the Power BI dashboard and then we can track our clashes how many are resolved how many are new how many are uh, approved uh, then in terms of we have several buildings so we can compare between buildings and see the progress of clash clash uh, clash resolved or resolved clashes next we have uh, uh, the issue management tool in acc so we implemented this way of tracking our issues in the design then we also make our report to understand what are the issues, closed issues, open issues, and with which discipline. So that was helpful to make constructible design. Then we have the first objective achieved. Now let's go to the next objectives, auditing construction on site. So the, this is the main objective. So we have several objectives. Below this objective, we want to ensure the, the, the adherence to the design. We want to track issues on site. We want to manage the changes. So our plan was to, re, to, to implement reality capture open space. Uh, our plan to set issue management rules uh, because we want to use it. Uh, because we have parties that we will, will be using this tool, the construction supervi uh, supervision si uh, on site, uh, the safety, uh, the design, uh, the, the design review uh, engineers, all of them will uh, be using this, uh, this issue management tool. We want to define change management rules. So this is our plan. The digital tools is used open space, BIM compare in open space, and also utilizing issue tracking tools. Uh, whether it is in open space or ACC. So here are, here, here are some examples. We implemented reality capture and ensure that uh, we captured uh, the uh, construction, uh, the, the ongoing construction on a uh, regular basis. 
we also compare that with the BIM and utilize that to ensure that the design match the construction or the construction match design. Uh, and then we also use the issue tracking tools to make reports and understand where are the issues and the status of the issues. And in this way, we achieve the second objective. Uh, number two is achieved. Now let's go to number three. Uh, digit, uh, delivering reliable as built model and AIR. So the objective is to ensure the as well is matching what is on site. Uh, the data are aligned on the, uh, on, on the supplier's data sheet. So we want to ensure they are matching each other. So also our plan was to utilize the reality capture. And also we found that the best way to ensure that AIR is matching what is in the supplier sheet is to make automation process. We utilize Revit Dynamo script for that. Here are some, some examples from open space. We are, we are validating using the reality capture uh, pictures. Uh, in, uh, in terms of AIR, we use the Revit Dynamo script to copy, uh, the, uh, uh, to copy the information or, or to, to, to map the information from the uh, supplier sheets and supplier specifications to the uh, elements in the BIM model. So that will make the as built and the AIR is more uh, reliable. So in this way, we achieved our goals that matching our objectives as PMC. And here we successfully achieved our uh, ac action plan. Now, of course, we always have lessons learned. So we always seek improvements. So that's why we should write our lessons learned. I will just in sake of time, because of the time, I will speak uh, very fast about these lessons learned. So in the design stage, we have several lessons learned. One of them was the clash tolerances. So uh, it shouldn't be, uh, we, we shouldn't focus on the minor clashes. So we set rules to, the, to, to, to this to, un to uh, approve some uh, clashes that do not do not affect the construction. Um, one of the lessons learned during construction, uh, or the construction on site, that uh, there is absence of site technical coordinator. So that was uh, a gap that should be filled by uh, ensuring there is a BM technical coordinator on site. Uh, the handover, delivering the uh, the as built model and the AIR. Uh, sometimes, uh, if we don't utilize the automation in the correct way, it is delayed. So the automation was the key here. Uh, so we summarize our uh, lessons learned and always seek improvement. So after we have these lessons learned, we go to the next building and uh, again we see we see our objectives and we find gaps and try to fill these gaps. So this is the best way we found to implement digital tools and utilize it in the best way. Finally, just to remember uh, five things, always align PMC goals with digital tools implementation goals, proactively introduce relevant digital tools. So do not wait to the client to tell you use this tool or it is contractually important in the EIR, so we need to use it. Just utilize the digital tools that fit to your objectives. Number three, embrace the PMC holistic responsibility. So all PMC is required not to focus on one face. When we ignore any face, it will affect the other face because they are connected and the PMC role is to manage all the phases. Number four, prioritize the construction phase because it is important, it is connected to the design, it is connected to the handover. And finally, continuously learn and improve. As you can see, the lessons learned is very important and we always take this as lessons for improvements. That's all, thank you everyone for listening and I hope that you enjoyed our session today. Thank you.